Photoshop is the only dominant software when it comes to photo editing, yet there are many features which it should have and it doesn't. There's a small list of things which Photoshop should have but it doesn't and there's already this amazing app out there which does all these things. So let's start with the first thing on our list which is to clip a layer on an already clipped layer on an already clipped layer. On Photoshop now, now I'm gonna drag some images. Now I'll create a rectangle behind the girl which I'll use as the base for clipping which means I'll clip the girl's image on the rectangle. So I'll use the option and clip it. I also want to remove the background from this image so I'll select subject and mask it out. Now the girl is clipped on the rectangle. If I move her around she will not go outside of the rectangle. She will be locked inside the rectangle. And now we have an image of a tattoo like rose or a rose like tattoo which I want to be on her hand. For this I'll need to clip this on her hand but if I try to clip it it actually gets clipped to the rectangle not her hand so there's no way to clip it on her hand unless I unclip the girl from the rectangle here let's unclip the girl by doing the same thing click option and unclip and now let's clip the tattoo again on her and now as you can see the tattoo is clipped on her hand but she is outside of the rectangle now and if I try to clip her on the rectangle the tattoo gets clipped on the rectangle too so here's no way to clip a layer on an already clipped layer we can work our way around by creating a mask for example I select this girl's image here hold command and select the thumbnail to make a selection I made a selection of the girl's hand and I can create a mask and unlink the mask and then I can move around this thing wherever I want one more way we can work around this thing without creating a mask here is by creating a mask for the rectangle for these two whole things for which I have to unclip this first clip it the tattoo only to the girl create a group of both these layers and then select the rectangle tool and mask the group now what if I want to do some change this in the tattoo like if I want to brighten the right part of the tattoo so let's create an adjustment layer I'm gonna use curves right here brighten it lift it up to make it bright and now I'm gonna clip it to the tattoo so what happens here is again it gets clipped to the whole girl not only tattoo and let's invert this use the brush white color and if I paint over her hand is also getting bright which I don't want I want only to brighten the tattoo so here's once again we cannot clip an adjustment layer to an already clipped layer and we'll need to work our way again for this to work we'll have to choose another method for that first of all i'm gonna re undo all these things i've undo the adjustment the color i just did now i'm gonna select the tattoo hold command and click on the thumbnail and then go back on the mask layer of the adjustment layer then select the brush and then i'm gonna paint and if i deselect all it's bright but the problem is here if you zoom in even in zoom out you can see it is not perfect you can see black lines all over the place black halos all over the place which is just not good so here i'm opening the same document same PhD file in affinity photo 2 and here as you can see we have the rectangle here we have the girl and the tattoo so, so in order to clip the girl on the rectangle what you will have to do is drag the girl in the middle of the rectangle and she will be clipped in it now the girl is clipped now i want to clip the tattoo i'm going to drag the tattoo and in the middle of the girl and the tattoo is clipped in the girl this is amazing and in order to move it around you can use the v move tool to move it around and no problem if it's a raster layer because affinity photo doesn't decrease the resolution of a raster layer no matter how you stretch it big or small if the quality remains the same which is also a pro in comparison to photoshop so now this rose tattoo is clipped to the girl and if i want to make an adjustment layer to bright it up let's make an adjustment layer here i made a curves layer made it bright inverted it and now all i have to do is just drag it in the middle of the tattoo and it gets clipped in the layer now i'm gonna select the brush and here if i paint it only gets clipped to the tattoo and if i zoom in you can see there are basically no hellos and it gets clipped which is an amazing thing now what's even more amazing is if I create an another empty layer, let's clip it to the rose and let any random color and a hard brush. Now I painted it on top of the tattoo, make it more bright so it's visible. Now I can create another empty layer, clip it to this thing, paint it dark and then create another layer then clip it to this layer make it bright again and then create, create another layer then clip it to this layer i can just keep creating and clipping a layer to a layer without any hassle without any worry without editing any group without doing any selection and creating mask which is so handy here i create a black circle then i create an empty layer and clip it to the black circle and now i paint within it the gray color now i create another layer and clip it to this gray color area and i paint in the gray with white color now i can create another layer and clip it to this white 
part and paint around with dark color now i can create one more layer and clip it to this dark part and paint with some bright colors and i can just keep going on on to the next point which is to create multiple masks for my image here i'm gonna make it large all the way to the corner like this and then select done now i'm gonna select the lasso tool and make a selection i'm gonna hold the option to use the polygon selection tool make a selection around the house close the selection and now i'll create a mask now what i want to do is show back this area but not on this mask on another mask and if i try to create another mask it actually creates a vector mask not a normal mask not a raster mask the raster mask is only one and there is no way to create more than one raster mask one thing we can do is create a group and then create a mask for the group but in the group's mask i cannot reveal back the parts which is hidden i can only make the more parts hide which is very useful but i cannot reveal back the parts which is hidden by another mask it is just not possible let's just say now i want to hide this part let's say just now i want to hide this door but not on this mask but on another mask and if i try to quit one more mask the same thing happens a vector mask is created if i try to paint painting is actually happening in the first mask not on this one so i cannot create one more mask what i can do once again now is i will have to create one more group and then create a mask and then hide the door here the same image i've got on affinity photo 2 and now i'm trying to create a mask here so let's select the lasso tool first so let's select the lasso tool first and start circling around here i have to use save instead of option to make a polygon selection tool so i'll click save and move around the house just like so and close the selection here and click a mask now as i said i want to reveal back in this area but not on this mask on another mask in order to do that i'll have to create a compound mask so i'm going to layer and new compound mask layer now all i have to do is clip the compound mask to the house and this mask and create mask invert it and if i paint over this is just another black mask and it is in the compound mask both masks are in the compound mask and if i select the brush again and i paint white it reveals back it is on another mask which is amazing both are not happening in the same mask and here are also options to add subtract and intersect masks which is more crazy so this is the power of compound mask there are also more cool options here in affinity photo 2 such as live mask you can use mask according to luminosity of the image hue range band pass uh, an example i'm going to show you here is luminosity range mask for example i want to mask out the house and the mountains because these are dark and the background is bright so i'm gonna drag this here actually it is here so let's move it back only the luminosity light mask so i'm dropping it down because it is the bright part we want to remove the bright part it is the same as the curves as we drop the line down from the right side it gets dark the bright gets dark so actually the same concept is also happening here here's also a preview option to see how everything looks in black and white i can increase the darkness more and decrease the brightness so as you can see very easily you can create a mask according to the brightness of the object and the part which are not visible you can just create a compound mask drop that luminosity light mask in the compound mask create another empty layer mask invert it and paint back the area which is not visible here we have some more cool features first of all i'm gonna delete all the masks step for the last one i'm gonna drag it to the top and delete this whole mask make it visible again this was the mask we had and now as i told you i want to mask out this part but not on this layer but on another mask layer so i can just simply quit on this mask layer and i've got an another mask layer and i can go to brush change the color to black and mask out this area very easily and now i want to mask out the door but in another mask layer i can create one more mask layer and mask it out and i can just keep creating infinite this is there is no limit even if i unless i hide this create a group and then create a mask layer for the group and it is it i can create multiple masks for the group too all i have to do is well, an extra work is to drag and clip the mask back to the group which is an extra work uh, apart from that you can create unlimited masks which is very amazing so those two were my most favorite features of affinity photo 2 and there are many other features too such as live filter which is now available in photoshop beta 2 which is a good thing there's already a video on this by pixel perfect which you can see i'm gonna show you how live filters works here let's say here is the background image and now i'm gonna create filters live filter let's create some depth of field blur i'm gonna increase the radius vibrancy no not clarity only the blur radius you can see there's a beautiful depth of field blur and what's amazing about this is it is a live filter which means i can move it around anywhere whereas in photoshop you are only limited to the smart object i move it to here and this works as a live filter which means i can add another layer choose a brush paint something and it will be blurred under the depth of field even if i drop another image it will be under depth of field and we don't have to go through any smart object one more amazing feature which has also been talked about in the video by fixing perfect is how its raster layers work they don't lose quality for example here's this image i'm gonna make it very small first of all let's rasterize it it's not rasterized and it's neither an smart object smart objects don't work in affinity photo 2 you can not make smart objects here but you can open smart objects here so let's rasterize 
resize this now i've resized this now i'm gonna make it very small i'm gonna move to another layer make one more layer and something go back to this and if i increase the size there has been no reduction in quality the quality doesn't decreases at all not in the slightest the quality is the same as it was however if i do the same thing in photoshop there's this image first of all it's a smart object so let's rasterize it it's rasterized now and now i'm gonna make it small very small like that and now if i increase the size back again it has lost its quality it is now pixelated <laughs> Both the softwares have their own unique features. Most of them, they are pretty much the same, but you can use according to your preferences and needs whichever software you want to. Affinity Photo 2 is a one time purchase, so you can have that and use it whenever you need to use it and leave it whenever you don't need to. Unlike Photoshop, Affinity Photo 2 is just a one time purchase, so you can have it and have it for a lifetime and so you can use it whenever you want along with Photoshop and it also supports many other files too. The another most amazing thing about the software is that it supports on the iPad and it has all the same features pretty much. 100% same features as the desktop in the iPad so it is very portable and handy for me to use that only thing is that you will have to purchase for both desktop and iPad separately and so one time purchase so I think it is a pretty good investment I hope you enjoyed the video if you want to see more content like this feel free to subscribe and like the video and I hope Adobe done some changes and brings us multiple mask option and clipping options to an already clip layer that would make Photoshop an absolute beast <laughs>